Um, in, in terms of things we want to see happen this game, I, I think, like I, I mentioned, the running backs and the linebackers last game, I want to see Eamon Ogbong Bamiga put it together again. I want to see if he's able to prove that he's a again? legitimate. Like, I want to see him prove it, man. Like, if he really is going to make a roster push, he's got to be more than a week two of the preseason wonder. Like, he's got to do it for multiple weeks. And by week two, I mean, like, the last week, not this week. So he's got to be able to put some games together and, you know, really prove that he's a player. And it looks like everything's going well in practice. But he he's the number one player to watch for me this weekend. I'd like to see Amen Ogbong Bamiga be a little bit better in pass coverage. Um, right. You know, right. so <laughs> I do think he was good, particularly in the second half against uh, the Rams, where he was just kind of wreaking havoc in the backfield a little bit, and definitely showed he can stop the run. Made some, uh, made that great play with Forrest Merrill, uh, I think, in the third quarter. So that was kind of fun to watch. But uh, as far as the guy for me to watch this week. It's, I'm still kind of focused in on the kicking game uh, and how that's going to work. Uh, you know, we you know did Kessman have... Kessman is gone, right? Yeah, Kessman is gone. Oh, yeah, um, we didn't talk about that. Yeah, we're, let's not talk about it. Um, <laughs> Nick Novak uh, actually did chime in and say that they were uh, sort of doing a three-step kicks last week. So that sort of meant that they were, you know, getting returns. So Tyler was right. Uh, and they were trying to do that themselves. Uh, so I'll be interested to see if they're just kind of maybe try more deep kicking this week and they feel like they have the kicking and punt, uh, return situation solved. Uh, cause I'd like to see which kicker can actually get the ball out of the end zone between Patchley and Viscaino. Uh, right. I do kind of think it is Viscaino in that regard, but I'd like to actually see it. Uh, so I honestly just want the kicking competition to be over. Just pick one of them. If you want to pick Badgley, <laughs> pick him. I, I'm just so over it at this point. Uh, you know, we're just in this, you know, Michael Bandy got cut, and I read it as Michael Badgley. Uh, so that was unfortunate, <laughs> you know. So that's just sort of the state of the kicking competition. But as far as other things I'm happy to see in this game, uh, I'm really just happy to see, you know, more of these competitions kind of work themselves out. Uh, I think another one to pay attention to is obviously running backs. Uh, you know, Stephen just yeah. mentioned it with running backs and linebackers, but Joshua Kelly and Larry Roundtree, especially with Justin Jackson out, and maybe Darius Bradwell, uh, you know, kind of gets himself in there too. He did have that standout special teams play last week where he just stopped a return really uh, pretty quickly. So that'll be interesting to see if he gets more involved in special teams uh, with the state of it right now. It seems like they're just looking for people that can play special teams well. Uh, yeah. and so it'll be interesting to see how they kind of use that running back rotation for sure. Yeah. I, this is when I'd like to see Roundtree finally take like that, not the minute of the next step, but at least be consistent and have another good performance. It, I don't yeah. want, I'm not a guy who wants to just like, Oh my gosh, Roundtree after one performance. And then, Oh my God, no, no, he's, he sucks. <laughs> like I want to give him a couple performance. So another one here yeah. would be nice to see, but I'm most interested in the interior defensive line rotation, especially because Cortez Broughton is now healthy and he will, I assume, yeah. play. So you have Broughton who could make the roster, Gaziano who could make the roster, Fahoko who could make the roster. Covington will be out there. Marill is pushing for a spot and he potentially could. I don't think he does. Um, but it's like front to back in terms of at least the depth guys. This group is really talented. And to me, at the scrimmage, Justin Jones was the best player on the field. Um, Again, with Herbert doing so well, I think Justin Jones was the best player. So for them to have such a deep defensive line rotation, granted against backups, I think is pretty cool. I don't remember the last time they really had something like that. So I'm very interested to see how it plays out. And I am starting to consider, it started with a photo of, oh gosh, who is it? Uh, Slater, Jackson, and Gaziyan all standing together. And the Chargers talking about like Northwestern or whatever. And yeah. I'm starting to think, that connection might actually help Gaziano make the roster. I don't know how much, Shana. but yeah, Cody Shada <laughs> obviously clearly, you know, like that school. They hired someone from that school. They drafted people from that school. So I'm curious. I really am. I'm looking at Gaziano this week because he wasn't really talked about all that much. He wasn't super on my radar. Frankly, most of the interior defensive linemen don't get a ton of talk in training camp, but then he comes out and has three pressures on 19 pass rush snaps. So yeah. I want to see what he can do. And if, you know, he's the guy to keep or if it's Broughton or is it Fahoko, who knows? But there's a lot of guys I'm interested in in that rotation and it's going to be fun to watch. Yeah, Gaziano. I will say just as, 
Oh uh, yeah, I was just gonna say as far as Gaziano, like I, I think watching that game the next morning instead of live, like you really just you just saw Gaziano everywhere, right? Just being able to pause it every play. Like that's something that I may not have noticed if I was watching it uh, yeah. you know, kind of at full speed, but he was just everywhere along with Rumpf and, and some of those other guys. So if he could do it another week again, then I do think we have to seriously start talking about like you know is he in this with you know Fahoko and uh, some of these other guys that are you know potentially on the roster bubble because I think he might be he he was kind of swarming last week yeah he was and, and you know leading the team in pressures if he's able to do that again this week and again the week after that like I don't know how you keep a guy like that off the roster at that point um Cortez Brown I know a lot of people were like well he's injured like he's not doing very well I mean, he's been a good playmaker. You know, Tyler pointed out that one of the practices that he went to, he had a couple batted passes. He had an interception of one of those batted passes yesterday in practice. So he's looked really good when he's been on the field. Um, so it, it's definitely a battle that is really heating up. And it's kind of like a pick your poison because I feel like Fajoko and Merrill are really good against the run. You know, Merrill had a great tackle for loss in the red mm -hmm. zone um, against the Rams. And so if those two, if that's kind of, your focus in terms of like the backup interior defensive lineman, you want that run stuffer, um, you know, then you can go with those guys because I, like, if you're looking at this, like, well, I have Jones and Tillery who are my pass rushers and then, you know, Linval who can do a bunch of everything. And then Covington is a tank. And so if you want another run stuffer, you might as well go with one of those guys, but you know, it, it's, it's definitely a more heated position. battle. I think the biggest thing right now for any of these guys is just consistency and like that goes for john brandon who we talked about earlier if you're on the roster bubble the best way to make the roster is be consistent and so whether you're aiming or or larry roundtree like you just got to put some good performances together and you know I, I think that another person that goes that that goes for now too is jason moore i think had a couple of really nice mm -hmm. plays in the rams game he's been getting some work with the first team offense like i mentioned and i would like to see him become kind of that go-to receiver for Chase Daniel in the next couple of weeks. Obviously, Josh Palmer had a very good game, but we kind of know what to expect from him. So I'm looking for Jason Moore to, you know, become that go-to target for Chase Daniel and potentially lead this team in receiving over the next couple of weeks.